hello everyone. Um, my name is Aya Abe, and um, I'm a bit nervous. Um, I'm I'm a poverty expert um, from Japan. I work mostly with uh, Japanese social security systems, uh, such as public pension, public health insurance, and uh, um, social assistance programs in Japan for the poor in Japan. And you must all be thinking, well, do you have any poor in Japan? <laughs> but um, we do, and um, I think my presentation is going to be of some interest to you because Japan is a country which went ahead of the most of the uh, Asian and, and, and um, South and Central American and African countries, a little bit ahead, but, um, but also are still a non-Western, non-European -Euro origin country. And we did achieve universal health insurance and universal pension um, about 50 years ago, but now everything is falling apart and we are saying that we, it's on the verge of a collapse of, of, of universal health care. And I will show you how it happened, and maybe this will be a lesson to many of the countries that are following Japan that not to follow. So, is this the one I'm going to use? This. Where do I hit? Oh, here. <laughs> okay, this is basically what I said. And um, here I use the term social security to mean uh, pension systems for old age, disability, and widower, and also the public health insurance, and also long-term care insurance, which we do have. It's a public insurance, social insurance, and social assistance. So social assistance is what uh, people in the U.S. call welfare. It's for the income support for the poor. Mm -hmm. And it's, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, you probably all know that Social Security is going to take up a bulk of the budget of the, uh, of the main countries, and it's going to happen eventually. And these are just some of the, just fig some of the figures from the, um, some old um, welfare states. And you were saying that some, well, somewhere between 20 to 30 percent of the national budget is going into uh, <coughs> going into uh, uh, social security systems. So even though many of these developed countries have gone over these poverty problems long time ago, but still we are spending a lot of money on these systems. That's why we do not really see the absolute poverty as we see in a lot of developing countries. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the demography, which I think is going to be a nice uh, transition from Professor Berman's uh, presentation, because this demography plays a key role in um, uh, developing and planning the social security. And this is just showing um, population change from 600 to or projection toward 2000 and going into 2200. And you can see that we had long years, what is the point, what's the point? A stable population started to increase. This is a, a Tokugawa era. We, we had a fairly long periods of, of a peaceful time. And uh, then there's a population boom. And then here, this is where we are now. And we are turning because the, we have started to see the decline of the population. And it's projected to decline very rapidly. So we we're going to be see <coughs> Wait, excuse me. Oh, yeah. So this is the transition we have to face. And this is the transition that most of the countries will have to face pretty soon as well. Oops. And looking a little bit more shorter term, this is the Japanese population by age group from 1880 to uh, 2100. And we are right now 2010, so right here, over here. And from here on, this is just a project, projection. And 1960 is when we uh, achieved universal health insurance and universal pension. That's right here. So you can see the population composition at that time was this is children, and 
this much of the working age population, and this much elderly. And this is probably close to what we are seeing in a lot of developed, in developing countries right now, this composition. But it changed very rapidly from here, from here on. And then now we are seeing that this much, about one in four people in Japan are elderly now, with this much working population and very small children population. And it's going to get worse for some time, and then it's going to stabilize um, in <coughs> a little bit later on. And this is right now uh, looking at the, uh, the rate of the, um, the, rate of the elderly um, among the population. And you, you can see in 2010, it's about one in four people. And it's going to be in one in three people pretty soon. And then it's going to st stabilize. And um, looking at the same kind of thing, but it's a little bit depend different way. And Professor Berman talked about the dependency ratio. And here we are dividing dependency ratio into two dependencies. Uh, one is child dependency. This is the ratio of number of children um, as opposed to a uh, number of working age people. And then we have the elderly dependency. And because number of children are decreasing, that it is going down quite a lot here. And the number of elderly are, are, are growing very rapidly. So that's where we are seeing this, this green part. And here is what we call the population bonus, or demographic dividend, as we call it. And if you look at it, 1960s right here, this is when we started our social insurance systems. So at that time, we are facing a lot of population bonus for about 40 years. But now we are hitting the, what we call population owners, which is the, um, uh, the, the you know, opposite of population bonus that we're gonna be paying for that, for the population demographic change. So after the World War II, what happened in Japan? The war left virtually nothing in Japan. Everything was completely destructed, and all the um, you know, wealthy families were all gone, and there was nothing there. So we, the war, I mean, in the end, left a very, very flat society. I mean, everyone was poor at the time. And and then we started to see the economic boom, and then what happened? What, and we also had a tremendous population bonus and a very low dependency ratio. And so we achieved a very fairly equal society up to 1970s, 20 years after the war. And that's when most people feel, um, you know, a lot of people, even the non-Japanese people say Japan is a very equal society. But they, um, uh, they get they get that impression from the numbers from the 1970s. In the 1970s, Gini ratio of Japan was quite close to um, those of the Nordic countries. And we were very flat. And that's when we coined the term uh, all middle class nation because if we took the sample of poll of citizens, everyone said I'm a middle class. Like 19, nearly 90% of the entire population said, I'm a middle class. So we said, well, we're all middle class. And also, Japan was facing a very strong economic boom. So everyone was feeling pretty good. And the lowering the absolute poverty, and then we started to, uh, to uh, not to see a lot of poverty on the street. And, and after the war, there was a lot of hunger and also the homelessness. But still, those were going away. So um, public assistance ratio lowered as low as 0.7%. It became almost nothing. And we also started to construct social security systems like pensions and health insurance. But we didn't quite see that it was dependent on the population bonus, as you, I will show you later on. And also, we did not build any safety net for the poor because the government assumed that poverty was, was a finished problem in Japan. Up to 1965, Japanese government collected um, statistics on the poor. In 1965, it stopped saying that the war is over. I mean, saying that all the negative consequences of the war is finally all finished. So, um, 
believe it or not, the government didn't start pub publishing the poverty rate until 2009 after that. So for a long time, Japanese government and the public completely forgot that poverty might be an issue in Japan. And as the standard of all people increased, or inequality and poverty were all forgotten. And we started to develop uh, what we call developmental welfare state, which is the number one um, cause for welfare, um, in providing safety net for the people, was de economic development. So that was the number one uh, priority for the nation. And then <laughs> also we also started the familial uh, welfare state, which is a uh, welfare state dependent on family members. So a lot of the care for the elderly and the care for the children were provided with their families. And then after the 1990s, the first time that, that uh, there might be some poverty in Japan was homeless people in a lot of the major city, metropolitan cities in Japan. And then uh, increasing relative poverty rate. This came from the academia, not from the government. Um, people who are, uh, like uh, me and a few others started to calculate poverty rate in Japan and, and started saying, well, the poverty rate in Japan can be quite high. And um, this, was, this led to the discovery of poverty in 2009, which is first recognized in 2009. And actually, we had the first change of government in 2009 after this. And then, <coughs> but however, because the structure of social security system is so strictly constructed, we were unable to move away from developmental and familial welfare state. Oops. This is the relative poverty rate of Japan from 1985. The blue line shows the society as a whole, and the red one is the child poverty rate. And as you can see that it has been going up quite steadily um, since 1980s. And now we are at 16.1% for the whole and 60.3% for the children. And this, um, I'm sure many of you are very familiar with the poverty rate, but just, just in case, this is the OECD definition of poverty rate uh, for the developing uh, developed countries. And this shows the income distribution, and this is the percent of the population, and this is the income. And um, suppose this is the median of income, and then this is the 50% of median is uh, considered to be poverty line. And um, this shadowed area, people, people belonging to this part is considered to be poor. So it's a very standard way of calculating poverty rate from income data. And this is the one uh, showing by age and by, um, by sex. And this was actually quite surprising to me because we used to have a, like this, this shape of poverty rate where the elderly had a higher poverty rate and um, the young were fairly low in poverty rate. But here, for the first time, especially for men, the poverty rate for the young people surpassed the poverty rate of the elderly people. And which is not, still not the case for women. And that's because the pension system for women is still not very, very good. <laughs> and here you can see what's going on in, in the longer term. The green one is 1995 and 2001 and 2007. And this is 2007, the same one, and 2010. And you can see that um, poverty rate for men is going quite rapidly, growing quite rapidly here. And, um, but you might still think, I mean, even though they are considered to be poor in a, a relative sense, they might not be really be in in a very, so much of a hardship in terms of living standard. And so this is some of the figures of the material deprivation. And um, here, this is the uh, survey that uh, conducted by us. We asked, have your family experienced or not, not being able to afford food or clothes that your family needs in the past year? And then 
1.6% of the households said often, and 4.7 said sometimes, and 8.5 said few times. So altogether, about 15% of the families said they had uh, experience of not being able to buy food, and about 20% for clothes. And um, it, also in the sim on the similar uh, survey, we asked, uh, have your family experienced not being able to pay utility bills or rent? And uh, about 5% with all the families have experience of not being able to pay electricity or gas or telephone or house rent. And I also want to bring the one on the health services from the earlier sessions, but um, I didn't bring the slides, so I just caught the numbers. Also, about 10% of the working population said they had experience not being able to go to a doctor even though they felt like they are sick. And, um, and we also asked the reasons for why, and half of them were about the, about the time issue. They cannot make time to go. And half of them was a financial issue. They can, uh, either co-payment is too much or uh, they are not covered by insurance. So even in, in a very fairly rich country like Japan, I mean, you were seeing um, people who cannot really uh, um, get access to healthcare or utilities or uh, have the um, um, stable um, housing. And um, if we look at that poverty, relative poverty rate in international perspective, Japan is number four among the OECD countries. The only ones higher than Japan are US, Turkey, and Mexico. And if you look at the one parent family, Japan's poverty rate is by far the worst among the OECD countries. And so why is this happening in after we have constructed social security system half, you know, half a century ago? Um, this is showing the public assistance receipt, receipt late and um, this, the red one shows the percent of the population. So this is 1951, right after the war, five years after the war, uh, about 2.42% of the population were un, in the public assistance. And it went down quite dramatically here. And this is 1961, where we, um, we did the universal health um, insurance and universal pension. So I think what a lot of the developing countries and also the fast growing economies are seeing is this stage of the development where public receipt or the uh, uh, well, absolute poverty goes down very quickly because of the economic development. And then 1995, all of a sudden it started to climb up again. And now we are seeing 1.7%, which is almost as back to the 1960s. So, but still, I mean, it's only 1.7%, and uh, that's because Japan's uh, public assistance system is very, very strict, and we made it so, because we made this system very early on, thinking that poverty is gonna, gonna finish pretty soon. So we did not feel the need to make a generous public assistance system. So uh, the requirement to go into public assistment is very, very high. The means test and also the assets test, and also the, all the relatives have to vouch that they have no money to support you and, all, and such and such. So it's very hard for uh, any person to go into public assistance. But still, um, you can see this trend that in, it came down all the way, and but it starts to go up again. And the government is still spending a lot of money in social security. I mean, this is um, government outlay, so I couldn't translate all this, but um, for 2014, and social security expenditure is 31.8% of all the national budget. So we are spending a lot of money, but still, I mean, we cannot provide a basic serve, um, you know, amenities for a lot of people. So why is that? And that's because we have democratic cars. Um, as the population ages, expenditure growth for social security for the old age pensions and also widower pensions and also the health and long-term care. And 
also the working age population decreases, so the tax base is decreasing very rapidly. And age populism, what we call, ensures there's no cut in pensions or health care for the elderly is, uh, is viable. I mean, any politician who suggests that will be voted out of the, of the seat very quickly. And, <laughs> and because of the um, economic situations, the working age people who are not able to uh, burden any more taxes. And uh, right now we had a big problem of raising the taxes, consumption tax from 8% to 10%, which is low compared to a lot of the European standards, I'm sure. But still, it is politically impossible because uh, the working age is already too burdened because of the economic situations. And what happens, the tab is sent to the future generation by in the form of a public debt. <laughs> so this is shows the, the social security expenditure. <laughs> this is uh, old age pension, this is health care, and this, the rest are like uh, welfare and uh, <coughs> long term care. So it's been, I mean, from, just from 1990, it has been growing quite rapidly. And this is natural increase because of the number of aged people are growing, growing, and growing. And so even if we provide the same kind of services, um, of course, the expenditure would go up. And this shows the, what is, um, this is the, the source of, of, um, of um, source of receipts, and then this is the expenditure um, by categories. And, um, sorry. Because Japan did not really think there was a poverty problem for a long time. It was doing something really weird for a long time. And this is child poverty rate before and after taxes and transfers. And of course, after the transfers and taxes, the poverty rate should go down. And that is happening in a lot of countries here, in most of the European countries. <coughs> but only in Japan and Greece, you can see that poverty rate goes up after tax and, and transfers. And that's because we, the, the system itself has not really thought about uh, poverty for long times. So it was constructed that way so that poor burdens higher amount of taxes and transfers than they should, and they receive very small amount of payments. And because there is no social security safety net for the poor, the people are feeling um, tighter and tighter. They are feeling the pinch of the economic recession. And this shows from 1986 to 2013. And if we, we asked, uh, how do you rate your, your standard of living into five categories? In the past, most people in the, in the 1980s, most people, half of the people would say, I'm in the middle class, I'm doing okay so-so. But now, 60% um, of the people are saying that uh, they are having a very hard time or a hard time. I mean, they are just making ends meet. So these people are not willing to put up any more um, uh, burden, so they would refuse in increasing taxes, increasing ta in social security premiums. And what happens, we have to put it into, um, I mean, because there's a increasing expenditure, but less taxes and, and premiums, we have to finance it using public debt. Currently, the black line shows the public debt ratio. 43% of outlay is covered by the debt. And this is pretty bad. I mean, this is very, very large budget deficit. And how much, this is mounting public de debt, um, <coughs> accumulative one. And right now, every citizen in Japan has uh, 6.15 million yen of, uh, of debt on their tab, which is about, 550 50 grand in the US dollars. That's a lot of debt. <laughs> I 
the, the other safety net that Japan had was the family. Um, in 1979, Prime Minister Ohio said, we're going to build a welfare state Japanese style. And what he meant was that uh, the family plays a very strong role in providing safety net. Um, for example, oops. <laughs> the public pension is designed, but it's designed so that the amount is not quite enough for elderly person to live on his or her own. So together with the income of his sons to go to live in a three-generational family, that is sufficient. I mean, that is sufficient to, for him to um, you know, interact with others or to play golf or play mahjong with the elder, you know, other neighbors and stuff like that. But it was not enough to make a living on, on his own. Um, public assistance. <laughs> It's there, but also it has very strong requirement for family obligation. So family has to come first. Family has to say, there's just no way, there's no means that I can provide for my parents uh, so for um, public assistance to be released. And care for the elderly. Um, also, we have a long-term care problem, but um, it is assumed that care is provided at home. So, and... Uh, <coughs> That means that if an elderly cannot live on his own, someone has to stay at home. And um, Prime Minister Ohira, being a man, he was thinking the spouse should, should do it. You know? uh, there should be a man and also a housewife at home who would take care of the elderly parents at home. So that was the Japanese style, welfare style. But however, the family, as we know, it is also changing very rapidly. And this is the family structure of Japan in 1986 and 2013. Uh, <coughs> single person household was 18.2% uh, in 1986, but 2013 it's 26.5%. And now it's becoming the one with the, lar the largest the family type. And also the three generation family is here was 15.3%. But in 2013, it's only 6.6%. So that um, you can see that the family structure changed very quickly, very rapidly. And if you look at the elderly uh, household um, structure, you can see the single person household is from 86, uh, increased from 13.1% to 25.6%. So what we are seeing is that old people, I mean, and the red part is couple only, meaning the elderly and his spouse or her spouse, so that 50, or like half of the elderly are living in elderly only household. That means what we, we term elderly caring for elderly. So that means that the 68-year-old wife is taking care of 72-year-old uh, husband. And so that kind of thing. So now this is my last slide, and this is what we call Japan's deadlock. Um, it all starts from this demographic change, population decline, high dependency ratio, and aging. And now we're having the three crises, final fiscal crisis, and social crisis, and family crisis. Fiscal crisis shows that the population decline in reason to less the government revenue. I mean... <laughs> And also, the aging is in, so means increase in the, in the expenditure. And in turn, this goes to the government cannot provide, provide enough adequate uh, social protection for the, the poor people. And that leads to social crisis, increasing poverty, a loss of confidence in the government. The people feel that because of government is in such a fiscal crisis that they cannot rely on their, the public pension for, for their um, you know, pensions when they get old. So they don't want to pay their taxes either. You know? So people are unable to pay taxes and, and refusing to pay social insurance taxes. And then this leads to family crisis, which is low fertility increase in childless people and also increase in single person household. 
And that is happening because the, um, young people are getting poor, so they cannot get married. And the number one reason for not marrying, I mean, Japan used to be 100% marrying nation, but now one in four men are not, be, not marrying, marrying. And the main reason is that uh, they are too poor to marry. They feel that they're too, um, they cannot support the family, so they do not get married. And also, there's no family member, so there's no support, family uh, support when, when one gets to be in poor. And then this term goes back to um, less, less family support in long-term care for the, the age and no family support in maintaining living standards. So that means increasing pressure for the fiscal crisis. And this is going <laughs> round and round and we're in a complete in deadlock, unable to do anything. And um, I think this is shows what not to do for the rest of the countries. Because um, this is was also in Professor Berman's slides too. Because all the countries would follow the same kind of path as Japan. Um, this shows the ratio of population age 65 and over. Japan is the red one, the front runner. But all other uh, nations are following. And if we look at... Um, the region, I mean, this, this is China and, uh, and Korea. Korea is following Japan very closely, and then China, and the rest of East Asia. And then this is a dependency ratio where, I mean, the tricky part is this bouncing back, right? And then, except for Africa, which is the black line, all other regions are going to see this bounce back pretty soon. So we have to make sure that when, when designing universal health care coverage or a universal pension, that uh, they would, you, know, you would not hit the same kind of trap as in Japan. I do not forget poverty as the economy grows. I mean, this is the lessons from Japan. Do not build social security based on population bonus, and it will not last. And do not assume family structure remains as it is. It will change very quickly. And for the global strategy, what does it mean? I think that the society in which people feel they cannot bear any more burden you know, for themselves cannot, uh, would not want to uh, spend much on international aid either. I mean, they don't want to increase the taxes from 8% to 10% to finance their own social security in, in Japan. So. If we're going to say that we got, um, actually Japan's ODA is falling very quickly because of that reason, and if we want to have some kind of solution, we have to really um, tackle this problem of, of uh, poverty and inequality in developed countries for us to talk about the global poverty issues as well. Well, thank you very much.